This time we're going to resume the meeting of December 4th, 2017. Councilmember Friend releasing the Pledge of Allegiance. Speak with you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilmember Gilliel? Here. Mayor Velasquez? Here. Councilmember Friend? Present. City Manager Avra? Present. City Attorney Diaz? Here. Chief of Police Westrick? Here. And the record will show Vice Mayor Clower is absent and Councilmember Luna as absent. Thank you. The verification of agenda posting. The agenda for the City of Hollister City Council meeting of December 4th, 2017 was posted on the bulletin board on November 29th, 2017 at 10.06 a.m. per Government Code Section 54954.2. Thank you. City Attorney, do you want to report out from closed session? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. There were just two items uh, that were um, entertained in closed session. Item number one, conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation. Significant exposure to litigation pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9b. One potential case relating to the 400 block referendum. That matter was not undertaken and tabled because of a lack of a quorum. Specifically, the mayor uh, recused himself from that matter, and hence we only had two council members present for that. With regards to item number two, Conference with legal counsel existing litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9. That's award homes versus city of Hollister at Al. No action was taken on that matter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. We'll go to consent agenda. Are there any items council would like to pull? <coughs> I'd like to pull item A4. Are there any items from the public? No, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Is there a motion? Make a motion to approve the Consent agenda as amended. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Good. I'm A4. Thank you, Mayor Council Members. This item is a request for a supplemental appropriation of $150,000 from the general fund to do improvements out of the dog park. The question I had for you is last year we approved, I believe, twenty or 30000 for improvements for that park the dog park where are those funds have we used anything the projects that were approved out of the dog park were the original fencing which was about 20,000 and the playground um, and then that was 20,000 to pave the parking lot no this was to Brett do you have a recollection of that yeah we approved a, I believe it was about $20,000 to do improvements on the park itself, not the parking lot or other areas. I I don't have a recollection of that. Okay. The other question I have is $150,000. I, I see here you wanted to put some metal, some mesh underneath the dirt to keep the gophers out. I just seem, it seems to be quite a bit of money, and I just, I'm uncomfortable with the idea of Put laying down a layer of metal or whatever other material it is where dogs are going to be digging and end up getting hurt doing that. Do we have history showing this works or is this a proven this is method? A proven method, proven product just for this purpose. The product will be placed eight inches below the soil um, in an effort to keep the ground squirrels out of there. It'll also be wrapped up the fences because they can climb too. Um, they don't normally climb a six-foot fence. And then we'll bring the soil back in, mix it with organic material, put in the irrigation system, and then uh, sod it. So hopefully the owners won't allow their dogs to dig holes out there. That would be really helpful. Mr. Mayor, I have a comment on this when you have a chance. I did a little research on it as well. Dogs are going to be dogs, and they're going to dig whether the owners catch them in time or not. Um, it just seems like quite a bit of money to be using this method rather than just doing other improvements without it. Have we looked at other ideas? Well, the irrigation system out there is shot. It's a cast iron irrigation system that was put in in the 60s. It needs to be replaced. Um, the critter problem is the critter problem that we know. Um, our 
control methods out at the airport can't be used near the dog park because of uh, dangerous secondary po poisoning of the dogs. So we don't uh, poison the squirrels within a quarter mile of the dog park. Um, and as for getting grass to grow without the irrigation system and with the critters, it's gonna be an issue. But have we looked at any ideas, concepts of what we're trying to accomplish there other than just laying down the mesh? I mean, have we talked about the walkway around there, gold finds, or what part will be grass? Have we got an input from the dog owners that use it? Um, there's been plenty of input that it stinks, um, trying, to, trying to correct that. Um, the pathways would be what the pathways are. We put DG down. Um, I, I, yeah, yeah, I understand. I'm, I'm all for fixing the dog park. We've been talking about this for quite a while. I just want to make sure we're getting those that use it the most to be involved in it, making sure we're using the funds as best we can. $150,000 can go a long ways, and I just want to make sure we're doing it right the first time as we go out. So we had a chance to meet with some of these groups that are out there. Mr. Chambliss, um, perhaps I but, can help. Hang on for a second. Good. Have we had a chance to set up a meeting with the groups? Uh, no, I'm not aware of any groups that are out there. Okay. Okay, Councilmember Gilliam. So, Mr. Mayor, if, if it helps at all, so I, um, I, I've been approached by this uh, about this a, a bunch as well myself. Um, it's a concern citywide that we have a dog park and a functioning dog park, and there's uh, a, a lot of people reach out to me. In particular, um, there are groups that also want to um, donate. Money, so I, I think the, uh, the 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 maximum amount is the 150. I, I've been involved in this for a little while. I met with Mike out there. I met with some folks out there that want to donate the money. And and, and honestly, the I was kind of I was kind of surprised at the cost too, the 150. But with that being said, I did a bunch of research as well. And the uh, the wire is what's really important to get done right and to to make it last. So you can do it way way cheaper and not spend the money on the stainless steel wire that's going to last for years to come for the future. Or we can we can just do it halfway, you know, and put in cheap wire, or just don't put in wire, and it's just going to get dug up and torn up again. So I think the first step was getting the money allocated, and the second step is going to be the the outreach to make sure that we get the um, the folks uh, the the input. One of the other items that's pretty dangerous out there, if you look at it, is the location of where the um, the, the playground is. The playground's right next to, uh, I would say, I'm just estimating here, within 50 to 60 to 70 feet of a pretty major intersection. And um, I think it was put there originally because, you know, there's some shade and stuff like that. So if there was a major car accident, there's, there's a good chance that, um, you know, we could have an incident where a car would run into the playground there. So the thought was to move that, clean it all up, and, um, you know, have a good place for not only kids to play, but for people to bring their dogs out there for, for the future. And one of the big things, too, is we have this irrigation controller, and we have a, uh, another item here later on that is... Um, for lack of a better system it's a, or, or explanation for, from a layman, it's a master system that alerts all the, uh, the folks um, when there is an irrigation problem and an ir irrigation leak so we don't waste a ton of water and have a bunch of labor going around checking all the pipes all the time. And that will tie into this uh, system as well. And um, the, thing that, the thing that I think you're probably concerned about the most, and for me too, it was, it was a lot. The, the wire is somewhere around $60,000 roughly. But I, I can tell you that um, I, I foresee this being a maximum, and, and actually I foresee it's coming way under because of the amount of uh, donations that are out there. There's one person that's already committed to a $20,000 donation. So it's you know a work in progress. First step is to kind of get something allocated, and then I think we need to have, have groups come in and tell us what they want to do out there and get it done. Well, this, these are conversations we've had over the last several years. We've talked about moving the playground. These are all conversations we've had yeah we got to do it my, my concern is why haven't we set up that meeting with a group that's been asking for it? it's been coming here for the last few years to have that discussion what happened to the dollars we allocated last year or the year prior where were those funds used or how were they used if they've been used and we need to go back and look at the records on that I personally would like to come bring this item back for future date so we have time to invite the people that were involved early on in these discussions and do it right it's uh it could be where we use this sixty thousand dollars for the fencing underground it could be we don't 
It could be there is $20,000 from a donor. It could be that the donor never shows up. But we need to have a, a better conversation again, a better understanding of what we're trying to accomplish there so we do not make the mistake. We've had this incident happen before where we got ahead of ourselves and then we find out that's not what the public wanted. Let's get them involved early, make sure we're all aware of what, what it is, how we can best use these dollars. Because it might turn out we can use $150,000 in a way we haven't really thought about yet to make it a great dog park rather than just say, okay, dog park that keeps out gophers. So if the rest of the council <coughs> feels the same there way. Is time frame, Mike, you're looking at? Do we have to no. make, a, make a move now or is there? Is there time to, I can't imagine you going out there and digging it up in the winter anyhow, so. Not, no, Summer. Uh, plan for spring, but no. Would it be? Because I, I, excuse the me. The only reason why the sign was before you was the council person asked people. me to bring it up. I thought we'd, I know I've been out there and talked to a group of people. I know Jim has. And what you're proposing is exactly what I heard them say that they wanted a shade spot, they wanted things moved, they wanted to walk around, um, and they wanted a gopher issue taken care of. Maybe, maybe we do need to have a, a meeting where everybody involved wants to come down here and give us their input, and then we'll, then we'll do it. Sure. I, 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 I'm in favor of doing this, but I, maybe, maybe we do need to ask the question. It, is there... Um is, is there an, a particular group that we need to reach out to? There was a couple groups that met with Ray and I yeah. one time out there. Well, it's, I remember one was H Dog, and I'm ju I'm just curious: are these people are, are these kind of grassroots efforts still around, or is there a, a or is how would you like us to try to reach out and and get to these folks? I can look through some of my notes and make contact again. The San Benito County Dog Owners Group. Or yeah, it was the dog Hollister breeder. Dog Owners Group for a while, and that was the H-Dog folks, and I'm not sure if there's, I haven't heard from but them in a decided long time. when we to neuter the pit bulls and the chihuahuas, they went away. Some people had reached out and said, because they heard, they had heard that they, there was a, a plan to do some decomposed granite out there, and they said, bad idea for dogs, and so I may have, I may have That was my point. brilliant idea, just I, so you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was, well, it's, it's, it's a way to save money and, and do that, but again, that's why we're trying to do it the right way, but... Um, I, I think I may have some contact too. Maybe we all can all reach out and set up something. Then, if if that's the will of the council, set something up and uh, have a special study session for the dog park. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I'd like to have a sure of a meeting for them, have their input early on, and if we can get it, the better designs or ideas. Can we look front. at the first week of January? Is that okay with everybody? Because I think then, or the second we week, have, so we, we're off, right? We have to postpone this to a date specific, or do we have to? Uh, no, you don't, because we'll, we'll bring back a completely new uh, item when it's ready to go. Okay. We'll do it that way. So we'll, do we, we don't need to make a motion then or at this point, city attorney, what, since we don't have a date certain. If you, if you, can, can, you can continue the matter to a date uncertain. Okay. And that's what you, and we just remember to, today, uh, for, for purposes of a continuance, you can do that by a vote of two to one. For any, uh, because uh, there's only three of you here today with regards to any resolutions you're going to to act on that and, and approve such, you'll need a three zero vote. Okay. All right. Is there a motion to? I'll make a yeah, motion I'll that make we motion uh, study it at a later date. Date uncertain. All right. There's a motion. Is there a second? second? Motion second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. All right. We're going to move to public input. This is the time for anyone in the audience to speak on any item not on the agenda and within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council. Speaker cards are available in the foyer and are to be completed and given to the city clerk before speaking. When the city clerk calls your name, please come to the podium, state your name for the city for the record and speak to the city council. Each speaker is limited to three minutes with a maximum of 30 minutes per subject. Please note state law prohibits the city council from discussing we're taking action on any item not on the agenda. Do we have speaker cards? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Zavon Gazada. Uh, hello, my name is Zavon, and I'm a full-blown artist from San Diego County, Hollister, California, and I love the subject we're talking about, parks. 
because uh, this is an idea that I have also from hearing a couple of council meetings back. Mr. Friend here was asking for something to come into the educational and uh, you know uh, art and all that you know in one. I have the idea and I have the solution. I A A I P I A P interactive art parks and uh, I A P. Uh, what would it do? Would it be an interactive art park? Meaning that from day from right when you walk in, you're interacting with art. For instance, yes, Mr. Uh, for instance, yeah, it's uh, the microphone. Okay, my bad. For, for, I'm, I'm just excited, people, because uh, this is what Hollister needs. It needs something to keep the unity of community the core part of everything. And I feel that these IAPs, Interactive Art Parks, will help Hollister not only start something fresh, but can go from Hollister all the way to the nationwide. Art Parks is, uh, for instance, New York City just built a multi-million dollar art park. Why should a city like New York have to do something like that when, when a city like Hollister could do the same thing? Seven Six Picks Up Sticks is a, is a project that I think and I believe would work. It's putting seven art parks across the city of Hollister in six months. I have four places of retail spots that have been open and empty for some time now, and, and they would work perfectly. For instance, I'll use one as an example right now. The one across the street next to Debo's Liquors, that empty lot that has the thing for an, uh, uh, the rig of a diesel, that rig could be turned into a little library as well as a place for interactive art park. I think it'll work and I believe it will. I just need my community to understand that everything I speak about here has to do with the art, the culture, and the color of this community. I know I seem to be, uh, how do you say, outspoken or even emotional, but I'm an artist, full-blown, and I care about this community, I really do. And there's really nothing here, but the people are coming. The houses are being built and they're being sold just as fast as they're being built. And there's nothing really to do. We've got some wine bars opening up, which I say congratulations for taking that step forward because we need some entertainment out here. We need things to happen, and the only way they're gonna happen is if we do something about it. And I just want to let my community know that I'm full force, 100% into these IAPs. And I know there's people out here that, can, that would agree with me because there's some brilliant artists that live in this city as well. And I just want to let you know that I speak from my heart. I do. And, and, and I just want to let everyone know starting a business in Hollister, good congratulations and may everything be with you because I, in your, in your, in your, I believe in your business. I do. And I know it's hard to start something from fresh from the beginning to the end, but I'm telling you now, we can do it as a community. We can. And I believe that everything is gonna happen, not to fall apart, but to fall into place. And my name is Devon, I'm a football artist from Hollister, California, San Benito County. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Julie Vieira. Council members, I would just like to invite the public and the council to attend the Wreaths Across America uh, ceremony honoring our veterans on December 16th at 9 a.m. at Calvary Cemetery on Hillcrest Road. Uh, this is a project that was started at Arlington National Cemetery several years ago, and this will be the third year that the Chamber of Commerce has taken on this project for our community. So we will place a holiday wreath at the headstones of our veterans that are at Calvary Cemetery. So I invite you all to come and take part in the ceremony. We do need help putting the wreaths out, so I would appreciate any volunteers. Thank you. Thank you. December 16th. December 16th. Yeah, Diane Sykes. Hello, Mayor and Council Members. I am Diane, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Dick Del Curdle development that's going on Bonnie View Road. I am a resident there and has been granted by fellow neighbors to speak on their behalf again. We are concerned of the lack of care that's been given to us as the construction of Del Curdle development still takes place. There has been new damages to our old, new, our old narrow road from the semi-trucks that came through on November 14th. We neighbors worked together with Mark Medina to get them to stop using the road. My point here is this, within two hours our road actually received large potholes and damages to the neighbors' yards. So I asked, what do you think is going to happen when you guys do open the road and say that there's going to be 200 plus cars go down that a day? We want you all to reconsider the opening of our dead end street. There is already put in place three other ins and outs to the new development that is only for 21 homes. You have approved recently here in Hollister another large development of 200 homes with only two ingresses and egresses. 
There's many of those here in town that I'm finding out. So it seems to me approving to keep our road closed and left alone is not a problem for anyone at all. If you open our road, it's gonna cost more. The road is in need of a lot of care. City and county will need to pay for improvements. Why upset the residents on this road? County or not, we are all voters and we all have families and friends that vote for you all. If opening our road was truly needed, that's one thing, but it's not. Even the fire department agrees that they can do without our street. So does the developer. I ask you when we meet again on December 18th that you guys agendized us into your meeting, um, please approve the changes we are asking to please keep our county road a dead end. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Janine DiVincenzo. Di <laughs> Think about it. Good evening. I'm Janine Portier DiVincenzo, 1290 Bonnie View Road. Um, so we are scheduled we were scheduled tonight to be on the agenda but we got pushed back because there's not enough of you <laughs> so to the 18th um, so briefly we are in contact with Eric through Mark Medina and I are in contact with Eric from PG&E um, who is putting together a support team to address the issue of the aging gas line we on Bonnie View Road we have requested a current inspection um, through email, we have contacted the City of Hollister, Danny Hillstock, Utilities Engineer, David Rubeck, Engineer, Jeff Hall, the Inspector for the de Development. This gas line was put in in 1950, we found out. We thought it was 54, but it's 50. Um, and we have asked one question of them. Did the development at the north end of Bonnie View Road County hook to, up to a 67-year-old gas line without using a 3D tool inspection or any kind of inspection. As of today, no answer. So hopefully on the 18th, we will have some answers and present you with the results and discuss the deteriorated Bonnie View County Road. Bonnie View County Road has many safety issues to address um, before allowing the city to encroach through and to, be, and to accommodate the increased traffic of um, according to the develop the card in the development, the increased tra traffic is they're estimating 381 cars a day on a deteriorated road with the 67 year old gas line running through it. So, on the 18th, I hope we can get some answers and come to some resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Marty Richmond. Good evening, Marty Richmond from Hollister. I'd like to tell you a little personal story about what happened to me today. My wife needed some stamps, and I was foolish enough to say, I'll go to the post office and pick them up. And, of course, I got to the post office, and there was this enormous line because it's the holiday, and it's the post office. And you put the two of those together, and you know what you get. So, anyway, the line, it was not moving at all. I mean, dead stop. And I was only number four wait in the wait, and the one behind me just kept getting longer and longer and longer. And one of the reasons was uh, that there was a, a, uh, a lady there, and she was mailing 100 boxes to Afghanistan to the troops. And, of course, the government being what it was, each one of them had to have a customs form, and they had spent all night, she mentioned, or many hours, her and her husband and one of her children making those customs for them the night before. I didn't get her name. I'm sorry. I wanted to take a, chance, uh, a minute to publicly thank her for her patriotism, for her care of our people who are away from home this time of year. Thank you very much. Thank you. There are no more speakers, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Move on to D1, City Manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the only thing that um, I'd like to report on tonight is this, is um, I want to personally thank um, 
all the city staff and the HDA and I'm sure a number of other groups that were out um, for the Lights On celebration the Saturday after Thanksgiving. I'm not sure. Uh, I didn't happen to see everybody that, that attended, but I can tell you that um, the parade was uh, the largest I've ever been to. Um, the crowds were huge. Um, it was a beautiful night, um, and I want to thank everybody for coming out and enjoying the evening, and, and most of all, the people that were actually not necessarily just enjoying but working. So that was it. Thank you very much. We'll move to item E1. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. This item, uh, Resolution 2017-313, is to approve an operations covenant and declaration of covenants and restrictions between the City of Hollister and Hollister Hotel LP. The, this also is a public hearing item. The purpose of the public hearing is required by Government Code Section 53083 is to report specific information on the economic development subsidy because it exceeds $100,000. We're recommending a continuance of the public hearing this evening to December 18th. So staff is recommending that you open the public hearing and continue it to December 18th. There's a few outstanding issues related to the conditions of approval for the site and architectural associated with the hotel and that's why we're recommending the continuance we just like to have that all buttoned up before we enter into the agreement okay any questions from council okay this time we'll open for public hearing do we have any speakers no mr. mayor okay we're gonna close public hearing <coughs> is there a motion from council to continue for, to the can we keep that public hearing open we open public hearing, we close public hearing. Not close it, continue it to December 18th. Tonight. Tonight. Open. Can we open it back up on December 18th? The motion is to continue. Or yeah, if the motion is to continue the matter, uh, then at the, at the next hearing, you can certainly open it up for a hearing again. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we continue to December 18th. All right, there's a motion. A second. <coughs> second. Motion, second, all in favor? All right, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Move on to item G1, reports from city council members regarding their committees. Council member Front. I have no reports. There was no meetings yet this month. Council Regular. No report. Same here, no meetings this month for us. We'll move to item G2, informational reports from city council. Council member Front. Um, I just wanted to echo exactly what Billy was saying. Uh, thank you to everybody that participated, worked on, and enjoyed the uh, Lights On celebration. Also remember December 7th, this Sunday, is the, is the um, Remembrance Day of Pearl Harbor, and I think that's one of those days when everybody should take, reflect a little bit on what happened that day, and then um, that's it until next week. Okay. Councilman Regulio? Yeah, I would like to echo the uh, Lights On Parade was uh, amazing. I was shocked at how many people were there. It was, it was a very nice event. Um, another event that um, took place was on uh, Saturday morning. Um, the Hollister Recreation Department did a breakfast with uh, Santa and photographs. It was really nice. Uh, well, I, I was shocked. I got there at about 20 after 8, and it was packed already. It was very well attended. Um, I saw a council member uh, friend there early on. Did you end up staying all day, right? Pretty good crowd later on as well. All day. Yeah, it was amazing, amazing crowd. It was great to see the community come out like that and uh, rally around some positive things. We have a lot of uh, things going on in, in our city that we can rally around and be positive about. That was great. Um, I'm hoping the chief will give a report on what the uh, police department did as well when it gets to him. That's all for me, Mr. Mayor. Okay. I wanted to congratulate Ohana Shave Ice. They opened, they did their official grand opening this last week. Um, Great store if you haven't been there on San Benito Street. Go by, check them out. We're going to go over to City Manager. Uh, thank you, and I totally forgot about uh, Breakfast with Santa, so thank you, Councilman Gilio. Um, one, uh, one last thing. We did have, um, I promised the, 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 the 
neighbors that uh, live on Bonneview that uh, we would have a sit down and have a discussion about their various situations uh, a few Saturdays back, a couple Saturdays back. Um, I will have an item on the, ag on the agenda for the 18th um, so that they can be heard a little bit longer than the three minutes at a time and, and probably have a more consolidated uh, sort of report. But um, I thought it went, uh, went really well. Um, obviously nothing got accomplished that was meaningful, but at least we understood uh, uh, where uh, they were coming from and some of the major concerns that they had. So that was helpful for us. So. City Attorney? Nothing to report, Mr. Mayor. Thank Chief? you. Uh, we had a busy weekend at Hollister PD, uh, and it was all good stuff, no bad stuff. Uh, Saturday morning, I took a big group of uh, explorers and, and staff and non sworn uh, up to San Jose, and we built, helped build about 2,500 bicycles uh, for turning wheels for kids. Uh, we brought a bunch of those back. We'll give those out in a few weeks um, to uh, some kids that are deserving here in our community. And uh, I was able to kind of cut out of there kind of early and came back to Hollister to uh, an event for Animal Control, which was out at 410 Spring Grove at uh, the Garden Mart. We had a, uh, a bunch of people out there that were doing, um, they called it petography. And what it was, it was, uh, it was pets with, a, with Santa. He had a lot of pictures out there. And, and we also took out our adoption trailer. We actually got five dogs and three were adopted. Um, out of the trailer um, and uh, today was uh, actually a pretty huge day at the shelter because of the 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 activity we did this weekend so it's uh, it's been nice That's it. excellent city clerk I attended a class last week on the California Public Records Act request and found out some really good information and I'm hoping that we'll be, um, you'll be seeing an update on that hopefully in the next year on updating our policies and, and getting those straight. So that's it. Excellent. All right, H, I, J, and K, there's no business. Is there a motion to adjourn? Move for adjournment. Motion, is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. You young people picked the best day to come out ever. <laughs> good meeting. Good meeting.